Hey Winfrey Church, hope you're doing well. It's been a while since I've been able to bring a devotional video to you, so I'm glad to be doing this today. I uh, hope you get a lot out of this. You're encouraged by it and challenged by it. I uh, was thinking about commitment tonight. Uh, just a little bit ago, it's it's pretty late, but uh, just a little while ago, I have a friend who uh, released an album, a music album. Uh, some, some of you may know her. She sung at Winfrey a couple times and she's used Winfrey for some of our rehearsals that we did for the, the project. Uh, her name is Sarah Labrini. I'll just do a shameless plug for, for the album right now, but her name is Sarah Labrini. Uh, and the, uh, the album's entitled Strength Again. You can get it on iTunes and all that. Um, but I was thinking about this project that she, she did. She's a beautiful singer, beautiful music. Um, powerful songs that she's written and uh, it's, it's going to be a great um, ministry project that I hope a lot of people are blessed by. But I was thinking about the project itself, the process she went through and that all of us went through and it really got me thinking about commitment. This girl, lady, I, I can't even find the words sometimes. I try to describe to other people, you know, what her music is like and her talent and all that and I just... It's really amazing. And I, I'm struggling for words because it's not just that she's a great singer. Uh, it's just, it's her whole, um, her whole life, her whole self is put into her music and the message of her music, uh, the lyrics, the music itself. It's just beautiful and raw and powerful. Um, and I, I've never met anybody, you know, quite like it and, and you know, been a part of music quite like it. And it's, it's so full of her commitment. I mean, she is so committed to, um, to music. She's committed to the, the process of, you know, songwriting, but she's also committed to, to sharing, you know, herself and her experiences and, you know, the things that God's done in her life through her music. And she's, she's committed to other people being impacted by those experiences and being impacted by that music. Um, that's, that's what she desires more than anything else for people to be impacted. And she's so committed to it. Uh, I was thinking about a friend of our, that we all know, you know, from Winfrey, Matt Niesel graduated from Liberty university last week. And, you know, he did a, a, a worship and songwriting, um, degree, and we all know what it's like to graduate, right? The process of, of working so hard to accomplish something. Uh, to get that degree, to walk down the aisle, and to know that all the hours you put into it, everything you did, all the work is paying off, and that your commitment really, um, you know, achieves something. It's a big deal, right? And I thought about how committed are we to God? How committed are we to Jesus and our relationship with Him? How committed am I to the gospel of Jesus Christ? You know, if you talk to Sarah or Matt, if you talk to anybody, you can remember yourself when you graduated, you know, if you talk to anybody who's accomplished anything that's been challenging or anything that was a lot of work or anything that had a high reward, um, the commitment is the, the common denominator, right? And if you ask them, you know, during the process, how committed are you? I mean, they tell you that they're, they're committed. And you can see the direct relationship of being committed and achieving something, of being committed and having great fruit. And I think sometimes we're afraid to maybe just ask ourselves that question. Are you committed to God? Are you committed to your relationship with Jesus Christ? Are you committed to the gospel, to the word of God, all those things? Because no one wants to feel guilty. And I'm not asking the question to make any, any of us feel guilty. You know, well, I'm not committed enough and I need to be more committed. That's something that we've struggled with in the Christian church for a long time. This legalistic idea, you know, of, well, I'm not committed enough and I'm not good enough and I don't read my Bible enough. And so God's mad at me and, you know, all of that. And it's, it's not like that, right? If you're talking to somebody who's going through school, if you're talking to somebody who's finishing a music project, you can go down that road of berating yourself and I'm not committed enough and I'm not doing enough and that's why it's not working and all that. And that's a challenge that we have. But a lot of the times we just realize when we're really in something like that, we realize I have to be committed if I want this thing to go well. I have to be committed if, if, if the goals that I have, if I want to see them come to fruition. It's just something that we recognize and we recognize it in all kinds of areas of life, you know? doing a music album, graduating college, work, 
You know, you're committed to your work. You're like, I got to do this. If I want to meet these goals, I got to make my boss happy. I got to, you know, you're committed to parenting. I've got to do these things. If I want my kids to grow up and be sane, happy, wonderful, you know, God fearing people. I mean, there's just things that we know we have to be committed to these things. And I think sometimes we struggle with asking ourselves that question about our relationship with the Lord because we don't want to feel that, you know, that guilt and we don't want to go down that legalistic road. But let's just ask ourselves the question, knowing that God is gracious, he loves us, and that he wants us to be committed, not for legalistic purposes, because he's going to be mad at us, but he wants us to be committed because he knows the fruit. He knows what the goal can can accomplish. He knows, like Paul talks about, running the race and finishing the race. He knows what a rich life that's committed to him can look like. And he knows it's beyond anything that we can ever imagine. We're always growing in our relationship with the Lord. And the Lord knows that if we commit ourselves, it's going to be good. It's going to be good for us. It's going to make him happy. It's going to be good for the people around us. It's going to bless the world. God wants it for us more than we want it for ourselves because he knows it's just going to be great for us. So I thought of this verse that Pastor Benjamin talked about last week. It's one of a verse that I've always loved. Um, and it just so happens he's preaching, you know, or did preach out of, out of Philippians one last Sunday. And it's this, uh, verse in chapter one, verse six, it says, uh, Paul says about the Philippians that he's confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion to the day of Christ Jesus. And I thought about why is it that Paul is confident for the Philippians that this work that God started in them is going to be carried on to the day of Christ Jesus. Is it just because God is faithful? I know God's faithful. So Philippians, I know God's going to do his work and he's going to carry it on to the day of Christ Jesus. Yes, he knows God is faithful. But I really believe that for the Philippian church, it's because they are faithful and they are committed. He knows they're a committed church. One little passage just to illustrate this is a couple chapters later in chapter four. Um, verse 10, Paul says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need and know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, living in plenty or want. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. But it was good of you to share in my troubles. The Philippian church shared in the troubles of Paul. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church, this has always struck me, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. And he says, not that I desired or need the gifts, but uh, but you did it and it will be credited credited to your account. I just, that strikes me that he says not one church shared with him in the matter of giving and receiving, but the Philippian church did. The Philippian church was committed. And it's interesting when you read the entire book of Philippians, you, you see that, you see the way Paul talks to them and he's talking to them like a father or a mentor or a teacher would talk to somebody, a student or somebody with whom they're pleased. He, he's giving them advice and exhorting them. But there's other books, of the uh, books, uh, letters of Paul, that he's not just exhorting them or giving them advice. And it doesn't really sound like he's very pleased with them. He's actually kind of rebuking them. The book to the Galatians, the book to the Corinthians. I mean, he's calling out sin. He's calling out legalism. He's calling out things that they're doing wrong. And he exhorts them and encourages them too. But it is not like the book to the Philippians. The book to the Philippians is... It's just happy and joyful. And it's like Paul is just happy with who they are and what they've been doing and sharing with, with him and the gospel. He knows they're committed. And I really believe that that's why when he says in chapter one, verse six, that he is confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion till the day of Christ Jesus. I know he's confident that God's gonna carry them on to the day of Christ Jesus. But I also believe that he is confident in this church because they're responding to God. When you're doing something that's a, a hard thing and it takes commitment, 
there's things that God is doing to carry you along and you want to give up and it's hard and you don't want to be committed and God picks you up and he carries you along and he gets you through to the end. That's certainly true. But there are things that you have to do. There's commitments, there's tasks, there's steps, there's that moment where you, you choose to continue to be committed. You choose to partner with what God is doing. You choose to say yes to God. You choose to obey God and he carries you through to the completion. And so I want to encourage you that your relationship with the Lord is the most important thing in your life. The gospel of Jesus Christ working in your life and being displayed to other people is the most important thing in your life. You standing before God at the end of time and God looking at you and saying, well done, good and faithful servant is the most important thing in your life. It really is. Everything else in our life either pales in comparison to, to that or everything else in our life should follow and come out of that relationship that we have with Jesus. So just ask yourself that question. Are, am I committed? And if you struggle with that question, don't go down the legalistic road of beating yourself over the head about it. And, and I just, I need to do better and I'm gonna do better. Cause that's kind of like our new year's resolution, you know, the way we do those things. And it just doesn't usually work. Go to the Lord and say, God, I want to be committed to you. I don't want to be a half-hearted Christian that just kind of does, goes through the motions. I want to be like the church in Philippi. I want to be the one that you're looking at and you're saying, I am sure that they're going to, they're going to finish the race. I'm sure that the work that God started in them is going to be completed and say, I want to be that person, God. And I need you. I need your Holy Spirit to help me be that person. I need you to wake me up. I need you to do whatever it is that you need to do to get me going in that direction. And then just do what God tells you to do. And if it is, he says, I need you to read your Bible more, then you read your Bible more. If he says, I just want to talk to you more, pray more to me, then you, you pray more often, you know, and you do the things that God calls you to do. But just know that he wants you to be committed because he knows what an amazing life it will be when you're committed to walking it out with him. Be blessed. Bye-bye.